he was on that he was he was on that seven that he was looking for a lawyer. Well, I need to write this couple of lawyers. Well, Jessica's the first one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I love the scarf for Ron Lewis' neck. I'm taking off the jokes.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Winnie County. Glad to see you all here sharing the worship with us. As you know, as you can see, Gina Strunzi is once again our wonderful pastor for the day. Yeah, nice little adjective there. I do have an announcement uh, handed me. Um, session is seeking individuals willing to serve on the nominating committee. Dave Strunzi, ruling elder, has agreed to represent Session. A person from the member care team and a person at large are needed. Contact Betty Hortink or a Session member if you are interested. I'm a member as well, so should you want to do it, I'm here. So, he windows too. Oh, we, <laughs> we have another announcement, yes. Yes, just a reminder that in the beginning of July, we have, are beginning to offer home communion. So if you would like home communion, you have to contact me and let me know. Otherwise, I won't know where to go. <laughs> okay, thank you, Christina. Um, also, we did the... Oh, I'm sorry, back. I'm going to finish your thought. Oh, we did the thrift and gift yesterday and thought that it was going to be kind of slow. But we ended up taking in over $900, so that was a pretty good day for us. Well, that, that's a good lead in for my announcement. Our next uh, date of responsibility at the thrift store is July 23rd, which is Sovereign State Weekend. Ooh, Roger and I are going to be gone. I need to know within the next week if we have enough people to staff. Otherwise, we need to let um, the folks at Lord of the Lakes know so that uh, some other arrangements can be made. Could be tricky because I believe I'm gone too. Yes, yes. And so we need to figure that out sooner rather than later. Okay. Thank you, Betty. Work, please call me. Right. Okay. Any other announcements? Please join me in the call to worship. I believe you could stand if you can. Yes. We'll figure out who's doing what up here. Were there any prayer concerns this morning that you'd like to bring to attention? Andy. Not a concern, but gratitude for all the prayers and good wishes for my grandson. He's doing really well. Excellent. And we're thankful. He's fixing his, he's fixing his legs. legs, right? He had some surgery on legs? Yes. Good. Good, good. How many Straight. casts does he have? How many casts does he have, Linda, this morning to know? How many what? Casts. Did they put a cast on his legs? No, he's wearing braces. Okay. Which lock at the knee, and we learned how to unlock and lock them according to when he has to bend or be straight. Ah, good. It's amazing what they can do. Wonderful. Um, Marilyn, did I see hand up? Yes. <clears throat> Travel mercies for my son and his girlfriend and her family who are coming um, Thursday, Friday for the 4th of July and a family reunion next week. Oh, how fun. I bet you're a happy grand, happy mother. Yes. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Continued prayer for the PNC for this pastoral search. Always. Prayers for the PNC. You got it. Oh, Jessica. Our behind-the-scenes media person, Kristen, requested prayers for her job search. Um, the job that she had gotten did not work out. So she is back searching. She requests the prayers for that. Thank you. She is on my list. Thank you. Um, prayers that, that of joy, in a way. Uh, Josh is going to get to see his roommate from college his freshman year. Um, I believe he comes from India. Oh. And they've remained friends over all these years. And Josh
Josh is just getting over COVID, so they're going to meet outside at a safe distance. Well, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Josh is your son, yes. correct? Yes. So um, Josh, John, and Linda's son is going to, first of all, recovering from COVID, meeting his college roommate, um, who is from India, but haven't seen each other in a while, getting together. So that'll be fun. Anything else? All right, turning it back over to you. Please join me for the call to worship. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Creator God, you formed our universe from a shapeless void. You fashioned the planets and forged the stars. You established the seasons and determined the rightful order. Creator God, we worship you. Word of, li of life, you Typo. Word of life, you spoke over your creation and made it live, made it live. You painted nature into beautiful color. You stirred the seas and rivers to song. You called forth creatures of every shape and size. Word, Word of, of life, life, we respond to you. Spirit of life, you gathered the dust of the earth and made people. You breathe life into them, that they may know you. You filled your earth with tribes and nations. You entrusted your precious world to us, your family. Spirit, Spirit of life, we receive you. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Almighty God, today we celebrate the good gift of your creation, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today we rejoice in the gift of relationship with you. Now we remain standing for hymn number 20. <clears throat>
When we are unkind to people and forget that they are God's children, when we are careless with the beasts and forget they are God's creation, when we ill-treat the land and forget the splendor of God, let us confess how we have failed to love and care for your creation. God, the diversity and detail, the wonders of your creation amaze us. Yet we confess we often fail to honor the beauty and variety in the details of our lives. When voices differ in opinion, we listen to those we agree with. We fail to honor experiences different than our own. We resist calls to honor the earth as if it were ours for the taking. Forgive our narrow perspectives. Open our eyes and our hearts to the pain and the perspectives of others and renew us all with your healing grace. Friends, in the good news, God continually shows us another way. God's mercy is as wide as the ocean. God's desire to forgive is as strong as the mighty wind. So let your hearts receive this outpouring of God's love through the Holy Spirit. In 582. <laughs> Christ gives us his word 
his peace and his love. In response to all that we have been given through Christ, let us share our gifts joyfully and generously. Please join me in the unison offertory prayer. Abundant God, you cause water to flow in desert places. You give wine to flow at wedding feasts, and food to feed 5,000 on a grassy mountainside. Your generosity astounds and humbles us. We bow before you in gratitude and awe, asking you to receive what we have brought in response. May these gifts be a pleasing and fragrant offering for the sake of the word you came to save. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Spirit, as we listen for your word, 
Open our minds and hearts to receive light, to guide us in truth, to change us. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Today's reading is Psalm number 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of the babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes. To silence the enemy and avenge and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over one month ago, every morning, I awakened to the most beautiful view, layer upon layer of multicolored rock formations placed one after the other on top of each other, constructing the mountains surrounding Ghost Ranch, New Mexico. Ghost Ranch is a Presbyterian retreat center in Abiquiu, New Mexico, located about 60 miles northwest of Santa Fe, in the southern edges of the Rocky Mountains. Have any of you been to Ghost Ranch? Anyone heard of Ghost Ranch? Oh, I see some nods and some hands up. It is a great place. If you can make a trip to Ghost Ranch, I highly recommend it. Upon my return, I was asked if I saw any ghosts. The answer is no, I didn't. However, I did learn how Ghost Ranch got its name. In the 19th century, there were two brothers who lived on the land. These brothers stole cattle and goods from people traveling through the region. They chose to hide their stolen goods in the Box Canyon on what would be future Ghost Ranch property. They discouraged their neighbors from poking around by spreading the rumor that the land was haunted by evil spirits and evil witches. Rancho de las Brujas, Ranch of the Witches. The turnoff to Ghost Ranch is still marked today as it was then by the animal skull of an ox. The skull in the mountains had been made famous by many artists and photographers. The most well-known was Georgia O'Keeffe. O'Keeffe owned a home on the Ghost Ranch property, and the scenes from many of her famous paintings were of the area in and around Ghost Ranch. So now that you have a little history of Ghost Ranch, let's return to the reason for my visit. My visit was the second part of a three-credit seminary class titled Theology in Place. Here's a snippet from the class description. This course explores Christian theologies of place, which retrieve from our deepest traditions a spatially attuned, earth-honoring, incarnational, incarnational faith. I think that's quite a mouthful. In other words, place is important in theology. So nine seminarians, an environmental science professor, a theology professor, and her young family set out to explore the intersection of faith and science, creation and the earth at Ghost Ranch, New Mexico. The first night we stood in awe of God's amazing creation. High on top of a mesa, we began our evening worship with a land acknowledgement litany. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes the unique and enduring relationship 
that exists between indigenous peoples and their traditional lands. It is one way that we as Christians can begin a journey toward truth and healing. Healing our relationship with the indigenous peoples that lived on the land before us, as well as recognizing the damage that we have done to Mother Earth. We would like to share with you the land acknowledgement litany from our opening worship at Ghost Ranch. We are here, here in the presence of God, here in the universe, here in the Milky Way galaxy, here on Earth, here on the continent of North America, here on the traditional lands of the Pueblo peoples, here in the Chama Basin on the far eastern edge of the Colorado Plateau, here in the Piedra Lumbre Basin where the Rio de Del Yeso begins its journey toward the Chama River. Here in the Arroyo Del Yeso watershed. Here in the Painted Desert. Here at Ghost Ranch. Here in the company of this community. Here in the presence of God. This combined land acknowledgement and litany grabbed our attention and made us think about the land that we were standing on and the people that had stood before us on that very same land, in that very same spot. This caused me to wonder what First Presbyterian Church of Winniconnie's land acknowledgement and litany of place would look like. We are here. Here in the presence of God, here in the universe, here in the Milky Way galaxy, here on Earth, here on the continent of North America, here on the traditional lands of the Menominee people, here in the Lake Poygan watershed, here on the southern end of Lake Winnicani, here at First Presbyterian Church, here in the company of those of you in the community as well as online, here in worship, here in the presence of God. Place influences our theology. Before this class, I will admit, I didn't think twice about the intersection of place and theology. Since taking this class, I find myself reinterpreting just about everything through the lenses of place and theology. Larry Rasmussen, one of the main theologians in the study of faith and science, says, all the createds are related. Rasmussen says we should learn to speak not about humanity in nature, but of humans in and as nature. We do not live on earth, but instead live as part of the earth. This makes me think that Native Americans are onto something with their understanding of theology and the earth. They believe creation is a give and a take. If you take something you need, you give something back. Cut down a tree, plant a tree. Nothing is taken from the earth without a prayer or an offering. They believe this provides balance in the world. If we adopted the Native American ways of thinking about creation, I think it's safe to say we wouldn't be concerned about the dwindling rainforests or the increasing scarcity of fish to eat from the ocean. Elizabeth Johnson, a Catholic feminist theologian uses the term deep incarnation to demonstrate that God is intrinsically involved in creation. Johnson proposes that abundant life, not just for one species like humans, but for all human beings and living creatures is and was God's original intent. God created the world and declared it was good. 
God created all aspects of the world and declared all aspects of the world were good. The birds of the sky, the stars, the moon, the plants of the earth, and of course, humans. Now God did say, after creating humans, that it was very good. More on that in a little bit. The point here is that God freely created the world out of love and declared it good. Fast forward several books in the Bible to the Gospels. Here we learn about the kingdom and reign of God through the ministry and actions of Jesus. The kingdom of God points to a future when God's divine will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Johnson says, God's will is nothing less than the reconciling and flourishing of all creatures, which we call salvation. Let me read that again. God's will is nothing less than the reconciling and flourishing of all creatures, which we call salvation. Back to humans being declared very good. Let's take a moment and look again at verses 4 through 8 in the psalm we read today. What are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet, all sheep and all cattle, the wild animals too, the birds of the ocean, the birds of the sky, and the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Humans are only slightly less than divine. I believe humans are intended not just to care for creation, but to join together with all of creation, humans, plants, animals, all working together as partners in the created world. What would this look like? What could this look like? Here are a few ideas to consider. First Presbyterian Church in Winnicani could take the pledge to become an official PCUSA Earth Care Congregation, meeting pledge re resolutions in worship, education, our facilities, and outreach. First Presbyterian Church in Winnicani could become a collection site for items that can be recycled, but aren't regularly picked up in curbside home recycling. Pill bottles, batteries, electronics, to name a few. And if I had to guess, I bet all of you sitting here and watching online could come up with many more ideas and maybe already have those ideas. As Christians and partners in creation, we are entrusted by God to restore our planet to its natural beauty. Learning about and becoming aware of this place, our place in the world, is the first step to honoring the earth and thanking God for our precious creation. In closing, we are here, here in the presence of God, here on the earth, here on the traditional lands of the Menominee peoples, here in the community of First Presbyterian Church in Winnicani, here in worship, here in the presence of God. And for that, I say, Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand and join me in hymn number 15, All Creatures of Our God and King. We are going to be singing verse 1, 3, and 6.
and for your people of every nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of healing and hope, we pray for peace and justice to emerge in war-torn lands <coughs> and in every place of conflict where power struggles put innocents at risk. Send your spirit of wisdom and compassion to break open the hearts of leaders to work with each other to protect the innocent and restore order for the well-being of both humans and nature. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and hope, we pray for Presbyterian disaster assistance and all groups offering aid and renewal in places where disaster and conflict have left people at risk. Support those who have lost homes, land, and livestock to wildfires. Give them the courage to go on and open hearts, open the hearts of those in safety to share with those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing and hope, we know that this land we call home faces conflict and pain, and that communities are divided by deep disagreements. We pray for healing and understanding to deepen between indigenous people and those who settled this land with no thought for those who already called it home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our God of healing and hope, we pray for those who know sickness or pain, for all who live in grief, loneliness, or anxiety and for all those who find these uncertain times overwhelming in any way. Today, we especially remember our pastor nominating committee here at First Press in Winnicani. We also keep in mind and ask for traveling mercies for Marilyn's son, Eric, and his girlfriend and family. Lord, we pray for Kristen, who is back on the job search again. May she find something that is a good fit for her. We pray also for John Harmon's brother, Jim, and his family. Jim passed away recently, and I'm told he has many friends and family, so please keep all of them in your prayers. We also pray for the women of the world, and their rights, and with the recent decisions that were made. Lord, be with all of these people. So wrap all of them in your loving arms, and let them know that you are there with them. 
In silence, we also remember before you those who are on our hearts today. By your spirit, surround each one with strength and love and equip us to offer support to those whose lives are woven into others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God of healing and hope, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. We give you thanks for Annie's grandson, Caden, for his successful surgery and his recovery. We also give you thanks, Lord, for this beautiful day. And one last thing, Lord, we give you thanks for Linda and John's son, Josh. First of all, that he's recovering from COVID. We are thankful for that. And then he gets to visit with a longtime <coughs> college friend and roommate. God of healing and hope, Jesus walks with us day by day to see us through every challenge. And so we claim the healing and hope he offers in the words that he taught us to pray. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Yeah, we'll see that first.